there. Welcome back to K-Dog's Movie Weekend. Well, this weekend in particular, it may not be exactly uh, a, a fully filled weekend of movies that uh, to, for you to check out and watch. That's the thing, you know, uh, I'm going to watch these movies and then uh, you can go check them out yourself, you know, see what you think. And I give my opinion, my review, and just go from there. Well, tonight, um, again, first of all, this weekend may not be uh, a full-on, full <laughs> a weekend of movies because I have a busy schedule, particularly this weekend. I have some things i got to do, um, particularly on Saturday night. And so um, we may get one in the afternoon, but uh, who knows. But uh, who knows. Again, who knows what's going to go on. So, but but tonight we are going to get a movie in. Um, we're actually going to go to the theater. We're going to take a trip, kind of a trip, back to 1996 to revisit a franchise that's been, they've been trying to make a sequel for years and years and years, but um, as life would ha have it, um, that changed the plans. Uh, obviously, the star of the original 1996 film passed away just before or around the time of COVID. I forget when Bill Paxton passed away. But we're going to be going to see Twisters tonight. So, hold on. Hold on tight. Because we're going to, this is going to be the first movie. Okay, so we are at the AMC Classic 12 this time around. There we go. Uh, this is also where I go. Uh, I don't just go to Muncie. This one is a little bit cheaper. It's because it's the Classic Theater. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when they call it, when they say Classic, that means it's not. Uh, it's void of any of the special amenities, ex except for they do show the 3D movies here but um it's just the regular stadium style seating and but you did a decent uh digital projection and digital sound but uh you just miss you just mix some you miss some of the luxury items so we're gonna go in here we're gonna look at twisters yeah so uh stay tuned okay so out of the theater back home and after seeing Twisters. This was it was a decent fun movie um, and of course this is supposed to be it's not supposed to be a sequel or anything to the original Twister from 1996 um, now, however, there are, it's, it's just, pl it's plainly just a reboot, a relaunch, playing upon the title. Now, that being said, there are some things that reference the original movie, uh, because in the first opening 15 minutes, we see the Dorothy, so, um, uh, yeah, we see the Dorothy, which was the device that they used in the original Twister to, to study tornadoes. And we meet our characters. Um, Daisy Edgar Jones plays Kate. She's the head of this science uh, research team. Uh, they're still in college. And they are studying tornadoes and they're wanting to do something completely different than what's in the original Twister. Because they have Dorothy and they have like the studying devi the, the device to, to study, but also she has come up with a possible solution to neutralize and dissipate a tornado. So, and the first few minutes, just like in Twister, 
tragedy strikes and something bad happens and so she becomes afraid to go back into the field and study and matter of fact gave up on the project um, but a friend of hers who was on that original team played by Anthony Ramos he kind of sparks her to you know you're not made to go sit behind a computer in New York City at uh, the NSSL, which was the National Serv National Weather Service that they used um, in, in the original movie, but but anyhow, you know, he he this guy pulls her out and puts her back into the field, and um, you know, because you're not meant to sit behind a desk, and she gives him one week to make a difference. And similar to, uh, there are some similar things that happen um, that that are yeah very similar that are in the original movie. That there's a because she meets up with Glenn Powell. His character is Tyler, and so she and he Tyler is a bit of a he's just a YouTube guy. He's just chasing tornadoes for the fun of it, and as a celebrity case, and you know, just uh, a bit of a show off. And he had he has like some research and stuff like that, but he's just being a, a cowboy, showing off. He's got this big old beat up Ram truck that he's modified, and uh, he's got his crew and. That they're just they're just a bunch of crazy kids and I just, they're not really kids but they're they're, they're crazy people. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that you know you're crazy if you want to go out and chasing tornadoes. And so um, Tyler and Kate end up uh, hooking up and coming together because. Kate realizes that her realizes that her friend has been bought and paid for by some corporate backing, and he's the 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 guy that's the investor. He's kind of yeah, he's funding the project, but he's making money off of these people's tragedy, the people that lose their homes, lose their businesses and all that, he's making money off of the real estate. And um, she realizes that and says, I don't want to be a part of that mess. I'm going to go chase with this other guy who's willing to do what I want to do. And he sparks up, you know, getting you know, uh, getting getting her back interested in what she was wanting to do with with her design, and and of course there's a relationship that builds up between Kate and Tyler, and it's so it, it is kind of um, there is care, and I will say that there's characteristics between Kate and Tyler. That are very flashback to Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, uh, because there's there's elements of both, really. Because Kate has elements where there's elements of Helen Hunt, is that she experiences this tragedy with an F5 tornado, and then um, where she has the Bill Paxton side, is that. There was there was some bad things that happened, and she doesn't want to get back into the field because of that personal tragedy. Now Tyler, where his where his Bill Paxton side is, you know, obviously um, driving the big red truck, big red Ram truck. Plus, 
he's the one that kind of gets her to rethink how they're doing things. Like, like uh, because there's the relationship thing, like, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, you went through this, but you need to, we need to move on. And then where he's a bit Helen Hunt is that he's, um, okay, where he's a bit of the Helen Hunt character is that he's so, he's very, he, he's not going to stop until he catches that one tornado. He's, he's not going to stop until he catches the greatest tornado. So, there you go. And plus, um... I think I I don't want to say that one movie is better than the other um, because to be honest, Twister really is a big guilty pleasure. If you, if you look at the dial, the original, I'm talking the original Twister. The original Twister movie is a the reason why that movie was so successful back in the day was because of special effects. It was the first time that CGI was used to manipulate the weather on screen. Um, you know, the big special effects and the visual effects, and so it was a it was a big breakthrough movie. But if you listen to the dialogue in the original Twister. It is terrible. The story is ludicrous. It's completely, you know, you can think of much, much better movies that have much better dialogue and a much better plot and story than Twister. But wow, did we go to see it, and man, did we enjoy the heck out of it. Just like this one, did we go, are we going to go see it? Yes. Are we going to have fun? Yes. But is it really that deep? No. <laughs> um, however, story time. There is um, there were some things in the movie that took place in Twisters that um, was a very memorable to me because. Like the beginning characters in the beginning of the movie, what they think is an F1 tornado de eventually develops into an F5. Okay, that's right off the bat in the first few scenes. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what happens to, you know, there, obviously there is a tragedy, but I'm, I'm not going to say exactly what happens. Um, but personally, in 2002, I was involved with a tornado that took place here in Blackford County, Indiana. Uh, this storm eventually made national headlines because it's not what I did to, not just what I did to our community, but what it did to a, a community in the next state, uh, which is Ohio. Um, this storm in 2002, November of 2002, I was working at our local KFC and talk about I was a I was in high school I was working a high school job okay um, and but across the street was a grocery store um, called Marshes and the storm had ripped the north wall out of the grocery store tore the canopy off the hotel that was right next to us, tore it off, left us alone. And it also did some damage out at our uh, mobile home park where uh, some uh, mobile homes were destroyed. But this storm made national headlines because it eventually made its way to Van Wert, Ohio. And by the time it landed in Van Wert, Ohio, it became a F5 and just did devastation and destruction to that town. 
and one of the stories that was talked about in the national headlines was uh, what happened at the local movie theater. Um, yeah, what happened at the local movie theater in Van Wert. And the climax, the ending of this film, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you, takes place at this little town's movie theater. So, it, the movie kind of brought back memories of that November of 2002 tornado. Is that, you know, we start off what we think is an F1, but we end up with an F5 at the end and involving a movie theater. So, in that case, it started here in Hartford City, Indiana, Blackford County, Indiana, as an F1, did some damage here then ended up in another town as an F5 at a movie theater being totally, and a town completely devastated. So, um, I'm even, I've even got some, I, I well, well it's also, to bring this back around, this is say, this is playing upon the name Twisters, okay? Well, for the 2010 Blu-ray release, Warner Brothers decided to include a bonus feature about tornadoes. It was actually produced by, I believe, National Geographic? Yes, and they talk about the Blackford County and Van Wert tornado on the Twister Special Edition Blu-ray. So, it brings it kind of around in a tornado-like <laughs> fashion. So, uh, yeah, Twisters. Um, matter of fact, I think I may play a little bit of the segment from that National Geographic uh, documentary. So, it's just, just a clip of it so I don't get in trouble so so let's take a look at this Van Wert Ohio is a small city of perhaps 10,000 a place that looks like it puts tradition and history ahead of science and technology but in Van Wert Ohio looks can be deceiving closer for four nine this evening oh my god it's huge Engine 3, we're back on fire band, just reporting. We have a visual on this funnel cloud. In November 2002, the entire constellation of our most advanced tornado technology came together to save lives in Van Wert. Scott Schaefer was manager of the town's Twinplex movie theater on the day the tornado struck. Living in Van Wert, we uh, joke around a lot around town that you know, we always get missed by the storm. It always goes around us. But as the theater's wreckage shows, the storm did not go around Van Wert that day. What happened here became a focal point in a story of Van Wert's close call with death, as a monster tornado roared on a destructive path directly through the community. I had a feeling that morning that something was going to happen. It was a feeling that, uh, that was in the air. Rick McCoy runs the emergency management agency for Van Wert County. The county has been certified under the Weather Service's new Storm Ready program. Certification means Van Wert is making best use of the full technological spectrum. On November 10th, 2002, it all went to work. At 1.40 that Sunday afternoon, McCoy heard his NOAA weather radio broadcast a report. The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma was issuing a severe thunderstorm watch for the Van Wert area. McCoy took that as a cue to go to his control center and keep an eye on the situation. Less than an hour later, things got much worse. This is Debbie DeVoy at the Van Wert County Emergency Management with a special weather statement for all listening amateurs. At 2.45, 
Doppler radar at the National Weather Service detected the telltale sign, a severe thunderstorm with strong rotation, the kind of thunderstorm that can produce a tornado. A tornado warning was issued for three nearby counties. McCoy knew that Van Wert would be in danger. I'm requesting spotters at this time. The sheriff in Blackford County reported this storm produced a tornado in Hartford City. Again, I'm requesting spotters at this time. In the nearby village of Will. Okay, so now you see it. And <laughs> um, so I don't know what the next movie is going to be or if there's going to be another movie. Maybe one more, if not two more. Um, probably just one more because uh, I've got some busy things to do today, so I um, don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. So uh, probably tomorrow, but uh, you'll be watching this all in one video, so don't worry about, you know, pausing or anything like that, you know. So stay tuned. I'll have the next film. Well, here I am back for the next film that we're going to watch, and this will probably the last one of this weekend that we're going to take a look at. Um, this is a film I ordered uh, quite some time ago, never had a t chance to watch, and of course this is a film from 1971. I've never, uh, I've always read about this film or, was, or uh, seen about it, and this always turns up on one of the greatest uh, thrillers and sometimes horror movies. But it's not that type of horror movie, it's just a straight up shocker and thriller uh, from Clint Eastwood. Again, from 1971, also I believe he directed this film. Yes, uh, yes he did, and as uh, directed and starred. And it's Play Misty for me. Yeah, this film tends to turn up a lot on uh, like uh, some of the greatest uh, shock moments and always turns up on those lists on YouTube. And so um, I have yet to see this film. Uh, so all I know is that Clint Eastwood plays uh, a, a DJ in this film and he's involved with this woman who is or may not be what she says she is and so um, yeah we'll take a look at this from 1971 directed by Clint Eastwood released by Universal Pictures it's Play Misty for me okay so Play Misty for me directed by Clint Eastwood from 1971 released by Universal Wow, this movie was quite interesting, and the okay, let's just let's just get into it. This is very much a psychological thriller, um, and it's usually I don't see that a lot in Clint Eastwood movies. Um, not to say, you know, obviously he hasn't done them, but a lot of the movies I've seen of Clint Eastwood, it's never been a thriller type. It's either been a, a drama or it's been some, yeah, it's mostly been like a dramatic or a, I don't know how to, how else to describe him, but, you know, he's you know, very dramatic in his storytelling. But this is a case where, it was an earlier direct directed movie by him, um, and of course the film stars Clint Eastwood as this disc jockey, uh, Dave Garver. Um, he's this popular jazz DJ uh, who works the graveyard shift, and but. Uh, but uh, he, he has quite a popular reputation for doing the night shift because, you know, it's, 
I, I yeah, he's playing jazz mostly in, or instrumental music, and so that would appeal to the nighttime people who are, um, you know, like lovers and stuff like that. You you get the picture of what I'm talking about. Well, he keeps having this woman call him every night, and she, basically a very devoted fan, and she keeps calling and requesting the song Misty. And, of course, he gladly plays it every night. And then he, one night, goes into a bar. He runs into the woman. And... They uh, just introduce each other, go back to his place for what they would used to call a little nightcap, and we find out her name is Evelyn, and Evelyn is played by Jessica Walter. Um, but as things go on, Evelyn displays some very unusual behavior. She she thinks that uh, that Dave is the most beautiful thing she's ever seen. She's in love with him, but Dave is actually in love with another woman. Yeah, but but Evelyn doesn't take the hints that hey I'm not interested in you I don't want to go any further I appreciate your fandom but Evelyn doesn't it doesn't go through Evelyn it's just like well it's like well if I can't have him nobody can basically what it turns into and she sh she shows up to the house and she does all this crazy stuff that's just insane just insane <clears throat> i mean this you you would be like calling the cops from the moment go i mean like she takes his keys and makes and duplicates his house keys so she has access to his house whenever she feels like it um, and of course like I said Dave Clint Eastwood's character has a legitimate girlfriend and by the end of the movie Evelyn has started pursuing her uh, and and this the overall stalking of of Dave and I mean this was a a thriller that you know it, uh, with a character you grow to love to hate her so that's a good villain it's it's definitely a good villain and I can see where the uh, the scares would come into play here is because I don't I early you know definitely jump scares because he, there's moments where he's just asleep in his bed and all of a sudden he's awakened by a screen and a knife a butcher knife in his pillow the chick's nuts but there's just one problem with this movie. The ending. You know, the whole movie is this psycho. And obviously, you do want to see her get her comeuppance at the end. And like I said, you'd be calling the cops from the first moment that you meet her. Because she's crazy. You would you would be calling the cops from the moment go. 
but they establish, Clint Eastwood establishes that the cops are not going to do any good. But unfortunately, it's not till the end of the film, and plus, the detective is a idiot. He's an idiot. So guess what's going to happen to the cop? He's an idiot. He's walking on to the girlfriend's property with a flashlight and making every noise that he could, every stepping on every twig, every branch, opening gates, that squeaky gates and s slamming them shut like all like, oh, she's not going to hear this. Like, you know darn well that psycho chick is in the house. Ugh. And what makes it even more ludicrous is the ending and how the chick gets her comeuppance at the end. If that's what it took, you should have done that crap a long time ago. A single manly punch out the window and over a cliff. So, I'm giving this like a three out of five stars. I'm, I'm serious. I'm giving this like a three out of five stars because this was just... You, this is definitely a movie where you see st stupidity. You know darn well that the chick is in the house. But yet, yeah. Miss, Miss Girlfriend? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're really gonna live, pal. Ah, oh, so, good villain, terrible ending. I'm, I'm sorry, it's got a terrible ending. A terrible climax when you should, you should have done a lot worse things to Evelyn. If you, because she's that bad. Now, I don't condone, I don't condone violence whatsoever. But... When it comes to when you need to stand up for yourself and fight for yourself and protect yourself as well as protect your loved one, come on. Really? This chick is coming at you with knives, scissors, and a machete. But yeah, how do you defeat her? But anyhow, I digress. That was Play Misty for me. So, I think that's, we're just going to call it quits here for this weekend. I uh, was only able to get two in, so uh, maybe next weekend we'll have a little bit more. So please do tune in next time and we will talk about some more movies and have some fun with it. So from me to you, see you later.